Hello, good evening and welcome to St Michael's Oer Moyne. It's Thursday the 18th of January and we're using the Common Worship Epiphany Season Order for evening prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ally to our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Lo, at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, high on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to enter his courts, in the slenderness of the poor wealth thou wouldst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These, though we bring them in trembling and fearfulness, he will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give, or evenings of tearfulness, trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <coughs> so we turn to the Psalter at the back of the Red Book, if that's where we're following. Others of us just scroll down in our app. Psalm 99, Psalm 100, Psalm 111. Or you can simply listen. 99, 100, and 111. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King, who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You are a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Use the prayers that follow each psalm in silence. The Lord is gracious 
His steadfast love is everlasting. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. <clears throat> it is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the faithful and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. And back to evening prayer during Epiphany for the canticle, a song of praise. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Amos 9, our first reading, chapter 9 of Amos. I saw the Lord standing beside the altar, and he said, Strike the capitals until the thresholds shake, and shatter them on the heads of all the people. And those who are left I will kill with the sword. Not one of them shall flee away, not one of them shall escape. Though they dig into Sheol, from there shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, from there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves on the top of Carmel, from there I will search them out and take them. And though they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the sea serpent, and they shall bite them. And though they go into captivity in front of their enemies, there I will command the sword, and it shall kill them. And I will fix my eyes on them for harm and not for good. The Lord God of hosts, he who touches the earth and it melts, and all who live in it mourn, and all of it rises like the Nile and sinks again like the Nile of Egypt. Who builds his upper chambers in the heavens and founds his vault upon the earth. Who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Are you not like the Ethiopians to me, O people of Israel, says the Lord? Did I not bring Israel up from the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtar and the Arameans from Ker? The eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from the face of the earth, except that I shall not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For lo, I will command and shake the house of Israel among all the nations as one shakes with a sieve, but no pebble shall fall to the ground. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, who say evil shall not overtake or meet us. 
On that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, in order that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this. The time is surely coming, says the Lord, when the one who ploughs shall overtake the one who reaps, and the treasure of grapes, the one who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make their gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them upon their land, and they shall never be plucked again, be plucked up out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. And so we have a fairly uh, horrifying passage of how God is going to vindictively find people and put them to death. We open with the disturbing image of the destruction of the temple and in its destruction people will be killed. Strike the capitals, shatter them on the heads of the people. So this is God's temple, where God is present, he is instructing that it be broken up, destroyed, raised to the ground, and kill people in the process. And anybody who it hasn't squashed, he will kill with the sword. God is saying, I will kill with the sword. None shall flee. It's repeated. Not one will escape. And then it goes on for great length, you know, if you hide in the grave, I'll find you. If you go up to heaven, I will bring you down. If you hide on the top of the mountain, I'll find you. If you go to the bottom of the sea, I shall find them. And you'll go into captivity, but you'll be killed there. I will fix my eyes on them for harm and not for good. My goodness. I watched a training video in relation to finding out about domestic violence earlier in the week. I couldn't stay in the room. It was not used to that sort of thing. But this is just that. It's like the, the one in that partnership who's going to do harm to the other fixing their eyes on them to reduce them to fear and trembling and then hurt them just in many respects unforgivably certainly unacceptably and we're told given a description of God's power he touches the earth and it melts and it rises and sinks like the Nile he builds his chambers in heavens his upper chambers in his vaults and in the earth calls for the waters pours them out on the surface of the lord of the earth the slightly bizarrely amos uh, uh, words of god are put into amos's mouth here comparing the people of israel to ethiopians one can only assume that ethiopians in those days were considered to be um, a poor show did not bring Israel from the land of Egypt and he goes on comparing them also to the Philistines who were brought up from somewhere and the Aramean from somewhere else so it's a suggestion that God's people are just like all the other people and God didn't, isn't going to treat them any differently just as those other nations were destroyed so he's going to destroy his own people lo I will shake the house of Israel but not a pebble shall fall all sinners shall die including those who say evil won't overtake us. Just chilling stuff. But then all of a sudden, there's just a screeching of brakes, if you like, and a U-turn, handbrake turn, and suddenly we find ourselves in a statement of blessing. It's extraordinary that it's in the same chapter, but so it is. So all sinners will die, and then immediately... On that day, we'll raise up the booth of David, or the place where David dwells, his dwelling place which is i guess jerusalem i'll raise up its ruins in order that it may possess they may possess the remnant of edom all the nations called by my name says the lord who does this time is surely coming so not only is he going to rebuild where he lives um, but also there's going to be such um, blessing on the land that it will produce food so well the grain that the reaper will overtake the one who's ploughing. A lovely idea of uh, expression of 
productivity and the mountains will drip sweet wine I'll restore the fortunes they'll rebuild the ruined cities <coughs> I will plant them in their land so it's not only restoring the building the city but he's restoring the fruitfulness of the land and he's going to plant his people that they may be fruitful too so there's this great sort of winnowing this destruction this clearing out I guess so that they can be restored similar in a in time and space way to the idea of the new heaven and the new earth replacing the old heaven and the old earth as one of those threads over and against the renewal of the current earth and heaven but may God be merciful our second reading 1 Corinthians 7 from 25 chapter 7 in 1 Corinthians from verse 25 now concerning virgins I have no command of the Lord but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy and I think that in view of the impending crisis it is well for you to remain as you are are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, do not sin. And if a virgin marries, she doesn't sin. Yet those who marry will experience distress in this life, and I would spare you that. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord, but the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. The unmarried woman and the virgin are anxious about the affairs of the Lord so that they may be holy in spirit, body and spirit, but the married woman is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly towards his fiancée, if his passions are strong, and so it has to be, let him marry as he wishes, it is no sin, let them marry. But if someone stands firm in his resolve, being under no necessity, but having his own desire under control, and has determined in his own mind to keep her as his fiancée, he will do well. So then he who marries his fiancée does well, he who refrains from marriage will do better. A wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, only in the Lord. But in my judgment, she is more blessed if she remains as she is, and I think that I too have the Spirit of God. And so here we have a continuation, as we started yesterday, of a point-by-point -point nuts and bolts instruction for this new Christian community. One of the first letters that Paul wrote He's uh, passed through, people have come to faith, there are ex-Jews, ex-Gentiles in this congregation, and many of them are looking to understand how their newfound freedom will work out. <coughs> and yesterday we basically heard from him saying, carry on as you are, if you're a slave, look for your freedom, but serve your master well, because uh, even your master is a slave to Christ. If you're married, remain married, even if your partner doesn't believe. If they want to leave, you may let them go but treat them well. You all owe each other. Your bodies belong to each other and not to yourself. If you want to refrain from physical intimacy, that's fine for a time, but do not deprive one another. And here we move on to the idea of getting married or not. And in Paul's mind, the return of the Lord, the end of time was coming very, very soon, soon enough that people shouldn't be concerned about marriage or about the world and that if people are married in his view they're less able to focus on God's mission and ministry which was far more urgent this word virgin pops up often here and it's my understanding that means um, as we see in that uh, Jewish repetition unmarried it says uh, and the unmarried woman and the virgins are anxious and so this is um, unmarried it doesn't mean that they are not known to a man as it were in the old-fashioned language <coughs> they're just not yet married so you just spend some time saying effectively you're better off if you're single staying single um, so that you can be devoted to God and you won't cause heartbreak if things separate you in your service 
Uh, conclusion, a wife is bound as long as the husband lives, but if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone. And that's different for Jews. Jews, you would have gone to the kinsman redeemer if that was an actual thing, but certainly within or close to the family ties of her husband. But um, he just says here they should marry into the faith or remain within the faith. Interesting, it's very different to the idea, the Jewish idea, that uh, procreation is God's will. We were just looking at Noah, was that this morning, where he uh, sent Noah and his sons out to be fruitful and multiply. multiply. Um, this is uh, very much um, at variance with that. <coughs> so should we turn back to evening prayer during Epiphany for the Responsory? Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. The Song of Mary. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and to scatter the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Behold, my servant who am, who, whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. Let us pray. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we look back over this past day and we recognise that there have been things about it that have not been so good, where we have received bitterness and rejection, where we have been disappointed in ourselves in things we had set out to do we've either not done well or not done at all we may have overlooked others to our shame and found ourselves overlooked or misunderstood we may have found ourselves overwhelmed by all the things we've been thinking about or have set our mind to do today our concerns for others and our empathy may have emptied us out we may perhaps through our sickness or poverty or isolation have found ourselves hindered in the full expression of who we are. And so we present ourselves to you for your healing, your restoration. And we pray also <coughs> with thanksgiving for those things about the day that have been good. <coughs> Excuse me. Where we have been able to enjoy health wealth where we have been aware of you where you've had good results <coughs> from tests where we've had good times with colleagues families and friends where we have done things that have been good and people have been supportive we've been grateful where people have referred to us where people have done things for us we've received good news gifts we thank you for those things that are good. Recognising that you are the source of all such things. So moving on to our intercessions, we pray with open doors. In particular, Kenya, we give thanks that five years after the murder of her first husband, Damaris Kyoko has remarried. We thank God for his healing power in her life and for using Christians from around the world to support her through their prayers and letters. 
Through those letters I have been very much encouraged, she says. They have motivated me to continue in the faith and to serve God even more than I did before. With Christian aid, we remember Martin Luther King this week. He said, though through violence you may murder the hater, but you do not murder hate. In fact, violence merely increases hate. King's message of equality and social justice continues to inspire and resonate today. We pray that Christian aid's work to tackle violence and build peace around the world will flourish and be effective. The Diocese of Salisbury Cycle, we pray for Lilliput Parish, beautifully named. We thank God for the many encouragements and good things that have been happening there, especially the arrival of Louise as vicar, who was licensed in September. Pray for her and her family as they settle into a new area and pray that more people will feel able to help serve in the various ministries in the church. We pray for those they serve and work with for their wardens and secretaries and treasurers and also for their ministers, Peter, Carolyn and Louise that they may all be encouraged that they see you working through them. And we pray too for all involved with the infant school. We pray for the pupils, that they will thrive and flourish, that both they and their parents, the junior, senior staff, the governors, will all know that their lives will be more fulfilled through their experience of you gained by their involvement with that institution. And in our benefit, we pray for half the addresses in Broad Main. We'll be praying for the other half on Sunday evening, if you join us then. For Main Street, Little Mead, Knighton Lane, High Trees, Glebe Farm, Friar Main, Chapel Close, Holcombe Valley Cottages, Chalky Road, Broad Mean, Broad Mead rather, Bramble Edge, Bramble Drove, Beach Close and Baker Paddock. We pray for all those who live in those addresses and those that do not yet know you, that they'll be drawn to faith as the shepherds were, as the magi were, through noting the signs of the times, through having religious experience. We pray that those who know you will act as salt and light in their communities, being healing, being compelling, being valued offering what is of value to those around and about them. We pray for those who are struggling, that you will hear and answer their prayers and make yourself tangibly present in those circumstances, directly and through helpful Christians around and about. We pray for those that are doing well, able to share from their excess with those in need, to the development of the community and your kingdom in those places. We pray for businesses that are based or serve those addresses, based in or serve those addresses. We pray they will continue to thrive and flourish. You will bless them as we read your blessing of the land where you, or the land you promised to your people. <coughs> we pray those businesses will continue to be able to provide employment and goods and services. And so we pray for those who have asked for or accepted that offer of prayer. Leslie, Elizabeth, Christine, Liz, David, Mark, Eric, Nicole, Cynthia, Jan, Graham, Brian, Helen, and others known to us. We pray that you will provide for them, that you will act with sovereign grace to bring an end to their struggles and suffering by providing healing, money, relationship, work, or whatever it is that is causing grief. We pray for wisdom and courage for them and those that care for them as partners, spouses, volunteers, professionals with the expertise that they need to help them through. And we thank you for all that was good in the lives of Jack, Nora, John, Ron, Graham, Jack, Leonard, And all others who've recently died, including those who've died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence or accident. Those that have taken their own lives. Remember all these years, mine falls at this time. Those we have known and loved but see no longer and all who have served you here. 
And we ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we bring ourselves and all who mourn to you. Praying that you will be for us the way, the truth and the life, whether we've lost a loved one or face a life-changing situation where our hopes and dreams have been significantly curtailed, causing us emotional imbalance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God in Christ, you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>